Ethereum is objectively more centralized today than it was just a few days ago. And sure, the merge was a success, but now we have a proof of stake system where just a few entities control a majority of staked Ethereum that processes transactions. Meaning that if a government or a regulation agency forced these companies to block or censor a transaction, these companies would do so. And I know what some of you are thinking, decentralization versus centralization, this is boring. What I really want to know is what does this all mean for the future price of Ethereum? And that is what we are going to talk about in this video. The thing is, if Ethereum was created today, no one would use it. It is too slow and too expensive. So why do people still use Ethereum? Why is it number two in market cap? Well, the thing is, Ethereum wasn't created today. Ethereum was created back in 2015, and it has a first mover advantage. And with such an early head start, Ethereum was able to build something beautiful, one of the largest decentralized networks, to the point where making a decision is very difficult because you have to convince more than half of such a large network to make an update. This is why Ethereum 2.0 is still being worked on when it was initially supposed to be here in 2019. So over time, people put in their money, time, blood, sweat, and tears, but Ethereum ran into issues. It is slow, it is expensive, but when you put so much time and money and sweat into really anything, you don't just abandon ship when things go wrong. Instead, you stick around and try to fix it. And right now, the problem Ethereum is trying to fix is that it's just too expensive and too slow. And Ethereum plans to fix these problems in steps leading up to the completion of Ethereum 2.0. And one of those steps along the way is the merge, where Ethereum goes from proof of work the proof of stake and following the merge, Ethereum's energy usage is down 99.9% because instead of using electricity and hardware to process transactions on proof of work, Ethereum will now use staked Ethereum. But there's a huge problem when it comes to staking Ethereum. If someone wants to be a solo staker on Ethereum, they need 32 Ethereum, which right now is about $46,000, which is nearly impossible for most people. So since most people can't become a solo staker, they give their Ethereum to a third party. And here we are today with a few entities controlling a majority of staked Ethereum, including companies such as Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, and a few others. So if government agencies came to these companies and said, hey, block this transaction or do not interact with this address, these companies would do so. And you might be thinking, if these platforms started blocking transactions, then users would just withdraw their staked Ethereum, but it's not that simple. When it comes to staked Ethereum with a third party, you actually give over the real Ethereum. You give over the keys. It is no longer in your possession. And if you want it back, you have to ask for permission as opposed to other blockchains. Let's take, for example, Bitcoin. Most people cannot mine Bitcoin on their own. It's also very expensive. So they can take their hash power and they can give it to a mining pool. But along the way, if something happens with that mining pool or the user is not happy, they can withdraw their hash power at any time. Let's look at Solana, for example. You give over your delegation rights, but you still hold on to your Solana. It is yours. So if you want to withdraw your delegation, you can do so at any time. And the same thing goes for Cardano as well. You are giving over your delegation rights, but you still hold on to your Cardano. It is yours, self-custody. You can take it back at any time permissionless. But with Ethereum, that's not the case. You are giving over the real Ethereum, and if you want it back, you have to ask for permission. And I'm sure some of you have heard of liquid staking on Ethereum, but technically there is no real liquid staking on Ethereum because when you give your staked Ethereum to Lido Finance or Coinbase, they give you back a synthetic version of Ethereum, staked Ethereum or Coinbase wrap staked Ethereum. This is not the real Ethereum that controls the network. You are not getting back the actual Ethereum that processes transactions. Now here's where things get very interesting. Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase stated that if Coinbase was forced by the government or the SEC to block or censor a transaction, Coinbase would exit staking, give back their Ethereum to customers because they want no part 
in censoring transactions. But there's an issue because state Ethereum is not able to be withdrawn until the Shanghai upgrade, which we may not see for another six to 12 months from now. It could be even longer. So during this time, they can't even give back the state Ethereum to their users. So the Ethereum community came out stating, hey, if these big parties listen to these governments, if they're forced to censor a transaction and they want to do so, well, they're going to pay a price. These bad actors are going to have their Ethereum slashed, meaning that a portion of their staked Ethereum will be taken away. But if you really think about it, it's not Coinbase's Ethereum that is being taken away. It is your Ethereum, the users who stake their Ethereum with Coinbase. Very problematic. I put out a tweet asking, when will we see the first government censored Ethereum transaction? Under or over six months or never? And 47% said under six months. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Will we actually see a censored transaction or a government forced censored transaction on Ethereum before the Shanghai upgrade, before these platforms are even able to withdraw their Ethereum? Comment down below. So what does this all mean for the future price of Ethereum? Well, of course, if Ethereum runs smoothly and there are no censored transactions or Ethereum is able to come up with a better staking model, then it's most likely Ethereum will do well. That's simple. Everyone knows that's likely the answer. But what if we do see a censored transaction? What happens to Ethereum, a chain that prides itself on being so decentralized Yet, if we see a block transaction in the future, it kind of goes against everything that Ethereum has built. Well, if we do see this happen, my take is that people will continue to use Ethereum and it will likely do well in the next bull run because the market doesn't care as much about decentralization as you might think. Whether you care or I care, the market doesn't and they have spoken. There are chains that are objectively more centralized than Bitcoin or Ethereum that have gained popularity over the last couple of years, including Binance Smart Chain and Solana. When it comes to applications such as NFTs and gaming, people just want something that is fast and cheap. They don't really look to see whether it's centralized or decentralized. And if we take a look at Solana, the NFT ecosystem over there is booming. Yet Solana has gone down multiple times over the last year, periods where no one could transact. And one could argue that that is much worse than having one or two censored transactions on Ethereum. Yet the market decides and the market continues to use Solana. I believe Solana is going to do very well in the next bull run. But there is something I do believe can end Ethereum. And that is if they are not able to address scaling issues in the next five to six years. Right now, like we said earlier, people are using Ethereum because so much time, money, blood, sweat, and tears was put into the ecosystem. So they're not going to abandon ship right away. They're going to try to fix it. But if in five to six years from now, Ethereum is so slow and expensive and not decentralized, then why would someone want to use it? Ethereum plans to add shard chains in the future. This is what will make Ethereum fast and cheap. But if they don't succeed, if they don't implement shard chains, then there likely will be another blockchain in five to six years from now that is more decentralized than Ethereum and faster and cheaper. So if that happens and we get to that point, why would someone want to use Ethereum? So for the masses, unfortunately, not everyone cares about decentralization. However, there will be specific use cases where decentralization is extremely important. And the question you have to ask in order to figure out what's really decentralized, I have to phrase this correctly because I don't want this video to get taken down from YouTube. But if you want to figure out what's actually decentralized, ask yourself, what would a very evil, bad actor use if they needed to make a transaction that no one could stop and no one could control? Likely, they're going to use something like Bitcoin or Monero. I'm not sure at the moment they would use anything else. This is how you figure out what's actually decentralized. And there are specific use cases where users will want something that is absolutely 100% decentralized. But for games and NFTs, unfortunately, people don't care. And this is why Solana's NFT ecosystem is booming right now. And if you want to know about Solana's booming NFT ecosystem and get in early, go ahead and watch this video right here.